welcome friends to new session on molecular biology now we can discuss nucleic acids chemistry behind nucleic acids basic property of living system is that they have a chemical basis for the storage of genetic information generally nucleic acids act as the genetic material in every living cell and carry information from one generation to the next information encoded in the genetic material is answerable for the establishing and maintaining the cellular and biochemical functions of an organism they are high molecular weight polymers and were mainly established in two different types called dna and rna the main function of nucleic acid seems to be the storage and transmission of genetic information dna is the key component of chromosomes located in the nucleus of all cells but small amounts are associated with the chloroplast and mitochondria but in the case of rna they will act as working copies of dna and play a major role in protein synthesis nucleic acids are linear polymers of nucleotides and so called polynucleotide sequences each monomer unit within the polymer consists of three components a sugar a phosphate and a base complete hydrolysis of nucleic acids yield heterocyclic nitrogenous bases five carbon sugars and phosphoric acid molecules by partial hydrolysis yields nucleotide residues only we can see on the figure on the screen the sequence of bases uniquely characterizes a nucleic acid and represents a form of linear information nucleotides are the monomeric units of nucleic acids nucleic acids are hydrolyzed to nucleotides by deoxyribonuclease or ribonuclease enzyme activity each nucleotide is composed of phosphoric acid and nucleoside and each nucleoside is composed of pentose sugars and nitrogen bases pentose sugar an important property of pentose is the formation of esters with phosphoric acid hydroxyl groups of the pentose especially at c3 and c5 are involved forming a 3 prime 5 prime phosphodiester bond between adjacent pentose residues and this bond should be an integral part of the structure of nucleic acids 3 prime 5 prime phosphodiester bond may act as the backbones of the nucleic acids there are mainly two types of sugars that is deoxyribose and ribose sugar please see the figure on screen the sugar in deoxyribonucleic acid that is dna is deoxyribose the deoxy designates the two prime carbon atom of the sugar lacks the oxygen atom that is linked to the two prime carbon atom of ribose that's the sugar in ribonucleic acid or rna this is a figure showing ribose sugar and deoxyribose sugar sugar pucker the sugars in nucleic acids are linked to one another by phosphodiester bonds nucleotide geometry in nucleic acids is essentially due to sugar puckering phosphodiester torsional angles and planar base stacking with respect to each other while the geometry of ribose ring can be defined from two parameters that the pseudo rotation phase angle that is p and the pucker amplitude ring pucker affects the torsional relationships of adjacent ch bonds in the sugar ring the ribose ring is not a planar and usually represents c2 endo south or c3 endo north conformation ribose ring pucker arises because a flat pentagon puts all ring carbon atoms into eclipsed conformations despite the fact that the pentagon angle of 108 degree is very close to the carbon tetrahedral angle of 109.5 degree this figure shows a ribose ring pucker endo pucker has a major displacement on the beta phase that c2 prime or c3 prime are turned out into the direction of o5 that is same side as c5 and the base n exo pucker goes to the opposite side of the ring please see the figure on screen 2 prime endo and 3 prime endo shows the lowest energy conformations watson and crick model of dna adopts 2 prime endo whereas rna and the a form of dna adopt the 3 prime endo twist a nucleotide was created by making a glycosidic bond between the base and the sugar and by making a phosphodiester bond 
between the sugar and the phosphoric acid. The bases are joined to the deoxyribose by glycosidic linkages at N1 of the pyrimidines or at N9 of the purines. This bond give rise to two conformations called syn and anti. In right-handed BDNA, the glycosidic bond is always in the anti conformation, while in left-handed ZDNA, it forms the syn conformation at the purine residues, but remains in the regular anti position in the pyrimidine residues. The change to the syn position in the purine residues to alternating anti syn conformation give the backbone of left-handed DNA a zigzag look. Phosphoric acid H3PO4. Phosphoric acid have three monovalent hydroxyl groups and a divalent oxygen atom, all linked to the pentavalent phosphorus atom. Please see the figure on screen. Nitrogen bases. The base components of nucleic acids are heterocyclic compounds with the rings containing nitrogen and carbon. Mainly, two of the bases are present, purines and pyrimidines. Now, purines. Purine bases are heterocyclic compounds containing a pyrimidine ring and an imidazole ring fused together. This ring system was named by Emil Fischer. Please see the figure on screen. It shows the pyrimidine and purine structure. There are two types of purines, adenine and guanine, commonly found in DNA and RNA. Pyrimidines are known to be a class of nitrogenous compounds containing one heterocyclic ring. The bases cytosine, thiamine and uracil are pyrimidines, commonly found in DNA. In RNA, uracil replaces thiamine. The strands are linked by a regular base pairing between the two strands. A is paired with T through two hydrogen bonds. G is paired with C through three hydrogen bonds. Principles of base pairing. Base pairing occurs between adenine and thiamine and the same went for G and C that is guanine and cytosine by hydrogen bonds. Chargaff rule. In 1950, Chargaff pioneered the paper chromatography of nucleic acids using this to determine how much of each of the component nucleotides was contained in a DNA sample. Each species differed in the amount of A, C, G and T. But within the species, the proportions of each are identical no matter which tissue the DNA is extracted from. Chargaff's further discovery was that the proportion of A, that is adenine, in any DNA molecule was always equal to the proportion of thiamine and likewise the amount of guanine and cytosine always correspond, a rule that became known as Chargaff's ratios. Watson and Crick base pairing. The orientation of the Watson and Crick model of DNA is anti-parallel, that is their 5 prime to 3 prime directions are opposite. That is, the members of each base pair can fit together within the double helix only if the two strands of the helix are anti parallel. A consequence of these base pairing requirements is that each strand of a DNA molecule contains a sequence of nucleotides that is exactly complementary to the nucleotide sequence of its partner strand. The strands are linked by a regular base pairing between the two strands. That is, A is paired with T through two hydrogen bonds, G is paired with C through three hydrogen bonds. Now, non Watson and Crick base pairing. Pairwise combinations of hydrogen bonded coplanar bases other than Watson Crick pairings give rise to non canonical or mismatch pairs. Unlike the majority of DNA structures in bulk that are stabilized by canonical Watson Crick base pairing, between adenine thiamine and guanine cytosine, those adsorbed on surfaces are often stabilized by non-canonical base pairing, quadrat formation and base surface stacking. Most commonly seen non-Watson Crick pairing is the pairing of adenine residues in the crystal structure of 9-methyl adenine, a hypothetical pairing between cytosine and thiamine residues. Hoogstein pairing between adenine and thiamine residues in the crystal structure of 9 methyl adenine, 1 methyl thiamine. Now, Hoogstein pairing. Hoogstein base pairing is a variation of base pairing in nucleic acids like monomeric A and T derivatives form AT base pairs with adenine N7 as the hydrogen bonding acceptor, normally in the case it is N1, and C6 amino group as a donor. 
which bind the Watson Crick that is N3, N4 phase of the pyrimidin base. These are biologically relevant like the stability of tRNA tertiary structure. Now base stacking. Base stacking is mainly for stabilizing 3D structural interaction of DNA and RNA. Stacking occurs more frequently in double stranded helical regions. Base stacking interactions are mainly hydrophobic and electrostatic in nature. In nucleic acid duplexes, they are partly in the strand and partly intra strand in nature. However, it is probably more informative to consider base pairs rather than individual bases as discrete units in order to visualize the stabilizing effects of base stacking. Nucleosides, a unit consisting of a base bonded to a sugar through CN bond, that is beta glycosidic bond, with the loss of water molecule is referred to as a nucleoside. A beta glycosidic bond is formed between the carbon atom of sugar and the nitrogenous base. The four nucleoside units in RNA are called adenosine, guanosine, cytidine and uridine, whereas those in DNA are called deoxyadenosine, deoxyguanosine, deoxycytidine and thimerine. Please see the figure on the screen. In each case, N9 of a purine or N1 of a pyrimidin is attached to C1 of the sugar. Now nucleotides. Nucleotides are phosphate esters of nucleosides. Phosphoric acid is bound to CH2OH group of sugar by ester bond. The most common site of esterification in naturally occurring nucleotides is the hydroxyl group attached to C5 of the sugar. In nucleotides, the first carbon atom of the sugar is ribose or deoxyribose is attached to the nitrogen at position 9 of a purine N9 or at position 1 of a pyrimidine N1. Nucleotides are named according to purines and pyrimidines. The four nucleotide units in DNA are called deoxyadenylate, deoxyguanylate, deoxycytidylate and thimidylate. Please see the figure on screen. It shows the nucleotide units in DNA. First one deoxyadenylate, second one deoxyguanylate, third one deoxycytidylate and fourth one thimidylate. The acidic character of nucleotides is due to the presence of phosphate which dissociates at the pH found inside cells freeing hydrogen ions and leaving the phosphate negatively charged. Proteins will attract to negatively charged nucleotides hence most nucleic acids in cell are associated with proteins. The structure of nucleic acids. The linear sequence of nucleotides linked by phosphodiester bonds represents the primary structure of nucleic acids. Polynucleotides can twist and fold into three dimensional conformations which is stabilized by non-covalent bonds. The bases in nucleic acids can interact via hydrogen bonds. The standard Watson-Crick base pairs are GC, AT in DNA and AU in RNA. Base pairing stabilizes the native three dimensional structures of DNA and RNA. While the primary structures of DNA and RNA are generally similar, their conformations are quite different. DNA contains two intertwined polynucleotide strands, but RNA commonly exists as a single polynucleotide chain or strand. The structural difference will perform different functions of the two types of nucleic acids. Another important feature of all nucleic acid is that they have two distinct events that is the 5 prime and 3 prime ends. This expression refers to the 5 prime and 3 prime carbons on the sugar. For both DNA and RNA, the 5 prime end bears a phosphate and 3 prime end a hydroxyl group. Please see the figure on screen. This shows the nucleic acid chain. Synthesis of a nucleic acid chain always proceeds from 5 prime to 3 prime that is from left to right. The whole nucleic acid chain is usually synthesized by RNA polymerase or DNA polymerase. They will add nucleotides to the 3 prime end of the previously incorporated base of nucleic acids. The structure of DNA. The studies of the DNA began in 1868. By the 1940s it was known that DNA is made up of linear polymers called nucleotides. A nucleotide consists of a pentose sugar, phosphoric acid and nitrogen base. 
Transformation of life science from biochemistry and agriculture to medicine and genetics was happened in 1953. In 1962, James Watson, Francis Crick and Maurice Wilkins jointly received the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for their 1953 determination of the structure of the oxyribonucleic acid. Please see the figure. The new era of molecular biology began in 1953 when they reported the discovery of the structure of DNA that genes are made of. Wilkins colleague Rosalind Franklin who died of cancer at the age of 37 could not be honored because the Nobel Prize can be awarded only to the living. They discovered that DNA consists of two long chains that form a double-stranded helix. Maurice Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin also contributed to this discovery by X-ray diffraction photographs of fibers of DNA. The characteristics of these diffraction patterns indicated that DNA was formed of two chains that wound in a regular helical structure. In fact, the DNA saga began in 1869. Frederick Miescher isolated a new substance from the nuclei of white blood cells. Adding alkali made the cell nuclei burst open and releasing their contents, from which Miescher extracted the DNA, which he named nuclein. Analysis of this nuclein showed that it was an acid containing phosphorus, so it do not fit into any of the known groups of biological molecules such as carbohydrates and proteins. Further analysis suggested that chromosomes contain DNA, which led another German researcher, Oskar Hertwig, to declare that nuclein is the substance which is responsible for the transmission of hereditary characteristics. Chromosomes also contain protein and biochemists were just beginning to appreciate what large complex molecules proteins were. The fragility of DNA was to conceal its underlying complexity for many more years. In 1950, Charles Gough pioneered the paper chromatography of nucleic acids. Using this to determine how much of each of the component nucleotides was contained in a DNA sample. Each species differed in the amount of adenine, cytosin, guanine and thiamine but within the species. The proportions of each are identical, no matter which tissue the DNA is extracted from. Chargaff's further discovery was that the proportion of A in any DNA molecule, that is adenine in any DNA molecule, was always equal to the proportion of T, that is thiamine, and likewise the amount of G, that is guanine, and C, cytosine, always corresponded, a rule that became known as Chargaff's ratios. Please see the figure on screen. This figure shows the representation of Chargaff's rule, that is adenine is always equal to thiamine and guanine will be equal to cytosine. Please see the figure on screen. It represents Watson-Crick model of DNA. The features of the Watson-Crick model of DNA deduced from the diffraction patterns are, first one, two helical polynucleotide chains are coiled around a common axis. The chains run in opposite directions. Second one, the sugar phosphate backbones are on the outside and therefore the purine and pyrimidine bases lie on the inside of the helix. Third one, the bases are nearly perpendicular to the helix axis and adjacent bases are separated by 3.4 angstrom. The helical structure repeats every 34 angstrom. So there are 10 bases which is equal to 34 angstrom per repeat or 3.4 angstrom per base per turn of helix. There is a rotation of 36 degrees per base, 360 degrees per full turn or 10 bases per turn. Fourth one, the diameter of the helix is 20 angstrom. The orientation of the two strands of DNA is anti-parallel, that is their 5 prime to 3 prime directions are opposite. Please see the figure. This is a figure showing the anti-parallel nature of the DNA. That is the members of the each base pair can fit together within the double helix only if the two strands of the helix are anti-parallel. A consequence of these base pairing requirements is that each strand of a DNA molecule contains a sequence of nucleotides that is exactly complementary to the nucleotide sequence of its partner strand. The strands are linked by a regular base pairing between the two strands. A that is adenine spared with T that is thiamine through two hydrogen bonds. G guanine is paired with cytosine through three hydrogen bonds. 
please see the figure on screen. This shows the chemistry of complementary base pairing. We can see that thiamine binds with adenine with two hydrogen bond and guanine binds with cytosine with three hydrogen bonds. This base pair complementarity is a consequence of the size, shape and chemical composition of the bases. The presence of thousands of such hydrogen bonds in a DNA molecule contributes greatly to the stability of the double helix. Hydrophobic and van der Waals interactions between the stacked adjacent base pairs also contribute to the stability of the DNA structure. The structure of RNA RNA was discovered by Frederick Miescher in the year 1868. It was also called nuclein when it was first exposed. As we discussed earlier, the structure of RNA is somewhat similar to DNA by the sugar component of RNA, ribose, has a hydroxyl group at the 2 prime position. RNA does not have the purine pyrimidine equality that is found in DNA. The presence of this functional group causes the helix to adopt the A form geometry rather than B form most commonly observed in DNA. Adenine, guanine, cytosine and uracil are the common nitrogenous bases of RNA. Thus, the pyrimidine uracil substitutes thiamine of DNA. In regions where purine pyrimidine pairing takes place, adenine pairs with uracil and guanine with cytosine. In addition to these four bases, RNA also has some unusual bases. Most cellular RNAs are single stranded even though some viruses have double stranded RNA. In folded regions, they are formed by pairing of complementary bases by hydrogen bonds. This is the figure showing the structure of RNA. This complex structure will help to store information and catalyze its transmission. Stem loop like structure, please see the figure on screen, is created when two complementary sequences within a single strand come together to form double helical structures. That is, hairpins, as shown in the figure, are formed by pairing of bases within 5 to 10 nucleotides of each other and stem loops by pairing of bases that are separated by greater than 10 to several nucleotides. These structures may form complicated tertiary structures like pseudonaut. Pseudonaut as shown in the figure. Pseudonodes are formed by interaction of secondary loops through base pairing between complementary bases. tRNA molecules and rRNA molecules also have well defined three dimensional structures. Secondary and three dimensional structures also have been recognized in mRNA particularly near the ends of molecules. Stem loop. It is a lollipop shaped structure formed when a single stranded nucleic acid molecule loops back on itself to form a complementary double helix which forms a stem topped by a loop. Hairpins are a common type of secondary structure in RNA molecules looks like a loop or a U shape. Pseudonaut A pseudonaut is minimally composed of two helical segments connected by single stranded regions or loops. Comparison between DNA and RNA. Now let us compare the features of DNA and RNA. DNA acts as usually as genetic material. RNA genetic material of some viruses. DNA is usually double stranded, but in certain viruses, DNA is single stranded. Example, Psi X174. In the case of RNA, most cellular RNA is single stranded. In case of some viruses, for example, retrovirus have double stranded RNA. Hairpin stem loop structures also found. In the case of DNA, the common organic bases are adenine, guanine, cytosine and thiamine. In the case of RNA, the common organic bases are adenine, guanine, cytosine and uracil. In the case of DNA, the base pairing occurs between adenine pairs with thiamine and guanine with cytosine. In the case of RNA, adenine pairs with uracil and guanine with cytosine. In the case of DNA, the pentose sugar is deoxyribose. In the case of RNA, it is ribose sugar. Most of the DNA is found in the chromosomes. Some DNA is also found in the cytoplasm, example in mitochondria and chloroplast, while 
In the case of RNA, messenger RNA is formed on the chromosomes and is found in the nucleolus and cytoplasm. rRNA and tRNA are also formed on the chromosomes and are found in cytoplasm. DNA have a complement ratio, number of A is equal to number of T and number of G is equal to number of C. But in the case of RNA, don't have complement ratio and most of the bases are not binding each other. Let us summarize what we have discussed so far. Single nucleic acid strand is a phosphate pentose polymer, a polyester, with purine and pyrimidine bases as side groups. The links between the nucleotides are called phosphodiester bonds. Each monomer unit within the polymer consists of three components, a sugar, a phosphate and a base. Deoxyribosugar and ribosugar are found in DNA and RNA respectively. Nucleic acids contain four different bases, the purines, adenine and guanine and the pyrimidine, cytosin are present in both DNA and RNA. The pyrimidine thymine present in DNA is replaced by the pyrimidine uracil in RNA. The bases in nucleic acid interact by hydrogen bond. Adenine is paired with thymine through two hydrogen bonds and guanine is paired with cytosine through three hydrogen bonds. Like a polypeptide, a nucleic acid strand has an end-to-end -end chemical orientation. The 5' prime end has a free hydroxyl or phosphate group on the 5' prime carbon of its terminal sugar and the 3' prime end has a free hydroxyl group on the 3' prime carbon of its terminal sugar. This directionality plus the fact that synthesis proceeds 5' prime to 3' prime has given rise to the convention that polynucleotide sequences are written and read in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction that is from left to right. For example, the sequence AUG is assumed to be 5' prime AUG 3'. Prime. The 5' prime 3' prime directionality of a nucleic acid strand is an extremely important property of the molecule. Ribonucleic acid that is RNA consists of long chain of nucleotide units. Each nucleotide consists of a nitrogenous base, a ribosugar and a phosphate. RNA nucleotides contain ribose while DNA contains deoxyribose, a type of ribose that lacks one oxygen and RNA has the base uracil rather than thymine that is present in DNA. Cellular RNAs are single stranded polynucleotides, some of which form well defined secondary and tertiary structures, some of them called ribozymes. Now, here are some assignments for you to work out. First one, explain the discovery of DNA. Second one, draw and label a simple diagram of the molecular structure of DNA. Third one, outline DNA nucleotide structure. Fourth one, how DNA nucleotides are linked together by covalent bonds into a single strand. Fifth one, explain chemical structure of RNA. Sixth one, describe the difference between DNA and RNA. Please refer the books given here for further studies. Molecular Cell Biology, written by Laudish, Burke, Kaiser, Krieger, Scott, Brescher, Plow and Matsuteria. Year 2008, it's a sixth edition, published by W. H. Freeman and Company, England. Molecular Biotechnology, Principles and Applications of Recombinant DNA written by Bernard J. Glick, Jack J. Pasternak, Cheryl L. Patton, 4th edition, published by American Society for Microbiology. Then a paper, Nature, J. D. Watson and F. H. C. Crick, in 1953, 171, page number 1737. Biotechnology, Demystifying the Concepts, written by Borges, Joel and Busser, year 2000, Printed by Benjamin Cummings, Imprint CA. Now, these are the few websites you can refer. www.dnaftb.org slash 19 slash bio.html www.chemheritage.org slash discover slash online resources slash chemistry in history slash themes slash biomolecule slash DNA slash Watson Crick Wilkins Franklin dot ASPX www dot 
rsc.org slash chemistry world slash issues slash 2003 slash april slash story dot asp. Thank you for watching this session. See you next time. Until then, goodbye.